A father pleaded with me as I rushed to treat his severely burnt teenage daughter, Siham. I only have to pause and I can hear her screams. She had sustained over 70% burns to her body when a napalm-like bomb, a ball of fire, burnt its way through her school and dozens of other children in my home country of Syria. August 2013. It's a day etched on my mind, heart, and soul. Siham survived for six excruciating weeks before she died. In 2011, peaceful protests calling for freedom and dignity were met with bullets and bombs, and so ensued one of the biggest wars on civilians and humanitarian catastrophes of our age. It has killed over 30 members of my family and ripped millions of lives apart. As a doctor living in the UK, I joined other Syrians in the humanitarian effort. I volunteered every evening and weekend my holidays turned into medical missions to the north of the country. I was providing clinical care and assisting the heroic local medical aid staff. So many of us hear the cries of the world and we believe we are savior, so we put our superhero capes on and we launch ourselves into the world to save it. The more suffering we witness, the more that we desire to create a bigger impact. And so from volunteer to medical director, to found a CEO of a humanitarian startup. The whole world told me that the more zeros behind your impact numbers, the better. And if you are a female minority leader, you better have a few more zeros than others. And so many of us who face illness and injustice and an indifference on a daily basis, the more that we go along the road, the more that we start to sacrifice ourselves. We ignore our needs, we suppress our emotions. The more entrenched our savior identity, the more that we become overburdened with the responsibility, the more depleted, infuriated, and jaded we become, and the more that we build walls around our hearts so that they don't break. Meanwhile, the bombs were still falling, and I found myself getting increasingly desperate. Like, how? How could this be? Hadn't we all agreed? You don't bomb hospitals. The minute I'd think about taking a holiday, a nasty voice would shout at me, how dare you? How dare you think about leaving these poor people? It's not your sister who is raped. It's not your child who is killed. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and get on with it. And with that, I would, until I couldn't. One day, I was sitting for a BBC interview talking about yet another war crime, and um, I had an out-of-body experience. I saw myself being interviewed, and the watcher exclaimed, like, what the f... I, I can't believe I'm still talking about schools being bombed. I can't believe I'm still talking about doctors being killed. It's been 10 years. And with that, I descended into a valley of darkness. The whole world around me disappeared, and I felt like the world's biggest failure. Sobs that I didn't know I hid burst out. The confusion, fury, and loss I felt were breathtaking. I finally knew that I had to do what I hadn't done to feel so I could heal. I was told that I had burnout, that it was compassion fatigue, but all I knew was that I felt broken, lost, and trapped. And then one day, in the middle of my breakdown, I had a breakthrough. Sitting after an exhibition, on, a photography exhibition on Palestine, I was doing a compassion practice, praying for all those affected by war. I turned it on myself for the first time and said, and you, and you have witnessed and suffered and sacrificed so much. Boom. It cracked me wide open. It called to my side my husband, the only human I know who can sit with me while I cry and do nothing. And in that compassionate nothing sits everything. 
that day, compassion finally took shame's chokehold off me and I began my healing journey. And I soon realized that what I was calling burnout was actually a mountain of undealt with grief. It dawned on me as I studied trauma that it had taken up home in every cell of my body. So I was like, I'm a doctor, I, I must know how to deal with this. And I searched inside my toolbox, but I found it wanting. I looked around me wanting help and I realized I was swimming in an ocean of deeply burnt out and traumatized health workers, healers and therapists. We were all just stuck in survival mode, launching ourselves into battle, battered, bruised and broken. And now health workers have one of the highest rates of burnout and suicide of any profession. I started to do various therapies to assist my nervous system back into a sense of safety, like Qigong, the Chinese martial art, which felt infuriatingly slow to begin with. I had become so accustomed to driving in the fast lane, responding to emergencies every second of the day, even when they didn't exist. But my Sufi meditation, breathwork, and psychedelic therapies were the game changers. These states enabled me to look inside the abyss and be with what is. But more than that, through them I met compassion herself. Compassion, the divine being. I recall on one such therapeutic uh, journey, walking through the woods with hot, hot, broken tears rolling down my face as I implored God as to why, why is there so much pain and suffering in our world? The answer was swift. I was pulled down to earth, nosing a shrub, watching a ladybird as she walked on a leaf. I noticed a spider's web glisten as lace, pregnant with rain dew. I suddenly smelt the boggy grass and felt every muscle in my body as I crouched when I had only been sadness a moment before. In that moment of awareness, my pain disappeared and I was in awe, mesmerized by the sheer beauty of existence. A moment later, I would recall my consternation, and I'm like, I'm still angry at you. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Memories of the 10-year-old who died after her anaphylaxis crashed into that of the 20-year-old who I promised would be fine and died at the end of my syringe. The limp body of a three-year-old from under the rubble merged from the sides with the smells of the burning flesh, and just as it felt unbearable, oh, birdsong, the most glorious and heavenly of sounds. I swear it was singing just for me. I found myself feathering, calling the, my, following the call of my feathery friend, catching a glimpse of this wonderment. Hmm. In that moment of presence, a peace washed over me. War disappeared and wonder entered in its stead. I walked into that wood alone and I emerged witnessed. Every tree provided unconditional love and every blade of grass was a hug from the divine that enmeshed me out of my isolation and folded me back into oneness. Too many of us are walking around in pain, ashamed of our traumas. Trauma isn't only the result of major or explicit violence. Trauma is the result of small and additive wounds, like from bullying or every time that you were told you were stubborn or a loudmouth. Wounds from being told to shut up and be nice, or wounds from not feeling loved unless you had the top grades. So many wounds from not feeling loved, heard or seen or appreciated exactly as we are. And each one of these wounds chips at our spirit, fracturing it. Our society unfortunately glorifies a stiff upper lip and invulnerability. It prioritizes achievement over self-actualization, and so we all hide our pain. To make matters worse, we send hatred into our pain, gluing our brokenness together, obstructing our healing. This illusion of separateness is harming humanity. It is causing us psychological pain and physical disease. But what's more, it is keeping us trapped in a loop of trauma, of humiliation, alienation, and degradation, the traumatized traumatizing others. 
No amount of never or again slogans or war memorials are going to break the cycle of trauma that we are caught in. Only our healing can. We then call this all compassion fatigue, but it isn't. Compassion doesn't fatigue. Compassion is infinite. What fatigues is our ego self, exhausted from pretending we are fine and starved by our loneliness. Rumi said it beautifully. Yesterday, I was clever, so I tried to change the world. Today, I am wise, so I'm changing myself. It is time to do the healing work. It is time to change ourselves. It is time for humanity to become wise. Physician, heal thyself. No amount of war memorials are going to break the cycle. It is time for us to do this healing work. Last year, last month, sorry, the earth shook, and it devastated my country again. Thanks to my healing work, I felt my pain, and I held it, and I gave it space. I allowed my fears to rise and my tears to flow, and every time that shame attempted to hold me again, I breathed and I prayed into it. Instead of contracting, I softened. Instead of overwhelm and panic, I felt empowered and inspired. It was liberating. I was able to hold a space not only for myself, but for others around me. Because out of the valley of darkness, I emerged a wiser medicine woman. I now know that my role, like all of us, like all other frontliners, is not to save the world. It is to be a healing presence. My role is to be a North Star during someone else's dark night of the soul, so that they too may find their way back to oneness. Compassion is the secret to our healing. If trauma is our separateness, Compassion is our oneness. It is the sacred medicine at the heart of all of our healing modalities. And so next time that you feel that pain in your back or your heart and you wish it away, pause, breathe, and tell it, I love you. I'm listening. I love you. I am listening. Though I have seen the worst of humanity, I have also seen its very best. I know that we can elevate human consciousness and help co-create the world that we want. And for that, we must shift from clever to wise and love ourselves back to wholeness. Thank you. Thank you.